So, eCentury has released three brand new sunscreens, and in today's video, we are talking all about them. Hello my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole. As always, timestamps and links are in the description box below if you would prefer to jump around today's video. My skin type is dry and acne prone, and yes, in today's video we are talking about three new sunscreens that dropped today from eCentury. These products were kindly sent over by Stylevana, and for a limited time, my discount affiliate code, which I will put up on the screen, does take between 10 and 22% off. I'll have all of this information on the screen and in the description box below as well. But let's get into what you came here for. Let's talk about these sunscreens. I do want to go ahead and tell you before we proceed further in today's video that I'm really only able to review one of these. Some of you most likely already know why that is. I'm going to show you the application and I'll give you some thoughts as well as the ingredients on all three of them. But yes, there's only one that works for me, unfortunately. All of that will be explained, but let's go ahead and get into the one that works for me, the one that I'm wearing today, and that is none other than the new Yam Root Tone Up Milk SPF 50 Plus PA4 Plus. Eccentree is calling this a mineral sunscreen, although I'll put the ingredients up on the screen and you can decide for yourself as this one does contain some butyl octal salicylate. This is the most expensive of the three new sunscreens coming in at $26.50 for 1.7 fluid ounces. Of course, on the Stylevana website, it is a lower price. It is currently $18.55 before that extra 22% off. But this is an interesting release. So right here on the box, it says foundation effect, non-drying finish, skin barrier protection, and this is in the Yam Root line, which I talked about not too long ago in that video. It's an amazing line if you have dry skin. And I found it kind of surprising when I first opened this package that the mineral option would be in the Yam Root line, because typically, as we've talked about a lot, zinc oxide is an astringent ingredient, which I think is why just about all mineral sunscreens feel a bit drying, look a bit matte on your skin. But at the same time, I do think there might be a crossover between people with dry skin and people who are looking for mineral sunscreens. So I do understand the logic, but I didn't believe the non-drying finish part. I didn't believe it. I've worn this sunscreen three times at this point, and the first time I wore this, I decided to wear it over another sunscreen, which is what I've done with the Numbuzzin sunscreen, which is kind of similar. We're gonna compare these in just a moment. I used a little bit of this over my sunscreen, added some powder, and I couldn't believe that as I was wearing this through the day, I didn't feel my skin getting dry at all. So I found myself going back to the ingredients list and just, you know, again, thinking about how this is why formulation does matter. We have that yam root ingredient, which is used for hydration. We have panthenol, really high up in the ingredients. Oat, rice, lotus, the formula is coming together to not feel drying on my skin. Of course, the problem at this point is that I hadn't applied enough of this product to reach the SPF on the packaging. We very rarely do when we are using foundation products. I shouldn't say rarely. We never do with foundation products. So I knew I had to revisit this and go ahead and try it with the two finger method. I have to say, I've found a handful of these tinted products where you actually can apply the correct amount of sunscreen and it looks okay on your skin. And I'm gonna say that's the case with this one. As you're about to see, I did apply two full fingers length of this product and it looks a little heavy in this video. You can absolutely see this tone up effect going on, but it's not, it's not too bad. It's certainly not what you would get from a foundation equivalent. I will say it's a little slow. It does take a while to buff all mineral sunscreens into your skin. I timed this. It took me four minutes in total to apply this and blend it into my skin. And in the end, Again, it looked all right, not necessarily great, especially around my hairline. I also kind of messed up on my eyelid there. You may be able to notice it, but it wasn't terrible. The surprise for me, the big surprise, is that I wore this all day long, and for about an hour, 
I could still smudge it off my face. An hour later, it was no longer doing that. In fact, it was now sitting on my skin in a really flattering way. I'm very mad at myself for not having video of this, but it actually, it kind of looked good. However, this is where mineral sunscreens start to feel drying. And this one, it, it didn't. <laughs> I do want to make sure to clarify, that doesn't mean that it felt hydrating. Non-drying and hydrating are definitely separate concepts. However, yeah, it didn't feel like it was sucking the life out of my face as most zinc oxide sunscreens do. So I have to admit, I really didn't have high expectations for this but I ended up being pleasantly surprised. There is uh, something that is probably an evident potential problem with this, and that is it does only come in this one shade. And for it to be a, as they say, foundation effect sunscreen does mean that it's limited. Something interesting with this is that I was looking at Eason Tree's Instagram kind of trying to figure out this entire release and they were replying to people that while there's only one shade right now they are planning to expand the shade range i feel like if this was an american brand i would criticize this i don't know if i feel comfortable criticizing a korean brand but at the same time i do have some suspicions that we'll talk about later in this video with maybe the overarching intent of this release and if my suspicions end up being right, then it's kind of surprising that there is only one shade. Anyway, more on that later. I'll go ahead and put up my rating system on the screen, and you can see I'm, I'm, I am impressed with this sunscreen. It, again, is a little slower, but not the slowest mineral sunscreen I've ever tried. It has a nice finish on your skin. It does work both under and over makeup, with my obvious preference being I do like it as a makeup product. I think it's a nice light coverage makeup product over another sunscreen. And so in the end, I'll give it an A. It's still not going to replace my absolute favorite sunscreens of all time. But again, I can use the new chemical filters. And so that's what I do default to these days. I do wanna do some quick comparison swatches before we move on from this sunscreen. So I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of that onto my hand here. That's the Easton Tree sunscreen. We are going to move on to the Numbuzzin. This is the porcelain base skip tone up beige, which I reviewed not too long ago. And I wanted to make sure I have kind of a tinted sunscreen that's not intended to be a foundation-like product. So let's use the Hue Guard by Live Tinted. And you'll be able to see, oops, move you down a little bit. You'll be able to see that this one has a tint, but it's not giving a foundation-like effect. I think the tint in this one is really just there to counteract the white cast from zinc oxide. The Numbuzzin does have a more drying sensation and it has a lot more of a smell to it. It kind of smells powdery, but you can see how that is much more of a foundation effect than this one. And then third up, let's do the Eason Tree right here. I really appreciate that this one is fully fragrance free. It does not have a smell at all to my nose. And again, it does feel less drying than the Numbuzzin. So hopefully that helps a little bit if you are trying to decide on a tinted mineral sunscreen. Yeah, overall, I've got to say, I'm impressed with this, but I'm still going to use it more as a foundation-like product, personally. One final note with this one before we move on, it is a little harder to remove. The other two sunscreens in this video, easy peasy to remove. This one, you're going to want to make sure you have an oil or a balm cleanser, and you do a double cleanse. Let's move on to the sunscreen that I thought was going to be my favorite for sure. This is the Onion New Pair Sunscreen. SPF 40? PA 3 plus? You have probably seen me rave about the Onion New Pair collection from Eason Tree. I absolutely love this collection. It's so funny. Again, I was reading through the comments that East Century has on their posts about these new sunscreens, and they were saying the Onion line is the one for acne-prone skin types, for sensitive skin types. Yeah, I, yes, I know. <laughs> 
Onion extract is great for soothing, it helps with redness, and no, it does not smell like onions. So I was super excited about this. Apparently this is also a collaboration with Cassandra Bankson. Interesting, we're seeing quite a few of these Korean brands collaborating with skincare creators. But I have to admit, as I was opening this PR box from Stylevana, I was so excited until I started reading the ingredients lists because as, again, some of you already know, I am sensitive to chemical filters. I don't, old school chemical filters. I don't think they are bad. They work for many people, but it is possible to have an allergy to those. And that's what's so great about the new filters that we typically see in most Korean sunscreens is that they do seem to irritate people's skin less. They actually behave kind of a little bit more like a mineral sunscreen in some cases. It's, they're just kind of better filters. So I am very perplexed as to why this sunscreen is using our, our US approved filters. Unless, you all know what I'm thinking, don't you? Unless Easton Tree is trying to go international and is hoping to start stocking these three sunscreens, all of them, in Ulta, maybe Sephora, maybe Target. Is that the game plan? Is that what's going on? Because it feels like it to me. It would still need an active ingredients panel. We don't have that yet. We don't have the deeper shade yet of the yam root. But I do find myself wondering, is that what's going on? Now listen, I felt bad. It was nice of Stylevana to send these over. And yet, me with my reactive skin over here, I can't really give you thorough reviews of these. But I still tried them on washed them off when they started burning, but I, I do have application videos to show you. And with this one, I think what surprised me the most is that I really thought this was going to be kind of more of a purple primer. Again, in this perplexing situation of Eason Tree choosing these older filters and these lower SPF ratings, as well as PA, I was thinking, well, maybe the intention here is for this product to be a dupe for Becca's primer. Do you all remember Becca's now discontinued primer because the whole brand is gone? But no, as it says on the side of the box, purple tint vanishes on all skin tones, and it absolutely does. It, it really does. Again, though, it is kind of primer-like in the rest of the claims here. Blurs pores, neutralizes discoloration. The purple tint can't vanish and neutralize discoloration. It's a bit perplexing, but again, these two last sunscreens, are perplexing. I, I'm just gonna tell you like it is. They're perplexing, at least to me. <laughs> Made with blemish-prone skin in mind, it's a bloomin' shame that for this blemish-prone skin type, I am unfortunately also allergic to the filters that are used here. They say it's artificial fragrance-free. It does smell exactly like a pool float to me. I mean exactly like a pool float. The application of this, I felt like I was inside of a giant pool float inflatable. Somehow I'd crawled up in there, I don't know. While unfortunately I just can't give you long-term thoughts on this, I can say that it was nice to apply. I wouldn't be surprised if some people do end up enjoying it, but I still do find myself perplexed about this one. Which brings us to our third and final sunscreen, and the most perplexing of them all, the... Hold on, let me tell you the story. So I have to take you back in time. I knew Stylevana was sending me these. I was so excited. As I've said, Eason Tree is the brand that I have determined is my number one favorite brand of all time. I was so excited. So as I sat here opening the box of these sunscreens, I got to this one, and I found myself going... I just got my eyes examined. Why does this look like it says SPF 30? As I'm sitting here a bit longer staring at this, I found myself going, no, that's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings, Alice. You know it to be true. No, no. Y'all should watch Andor, it's really good, I promise you. You have to get through the first three episodes. You're gonna be thinking, why would Alice like this until you get to episode four? It gets so good. Anyway, yeah, apparently this is the Hyaluronic Acid Daily Sun Gel SPF 30 PA3+, which just feels so confusing to me. It just feels so confusing. I have pretty much accepted that every Korean sunscreen I ever see will be SPF 50 PA4+. What? 
So this is the exact reason why I was poking around Eason Tree's Instagram, and you best believe there were a lot of people going, are you discontinuing the hyaluronic acid SPF 50 PA4 plus? To which they said, no, this is an additional sunscreen that is intended for indoor office use. They say that it has 10 types of hyaluronic acid, making it more friendly to dry skin types. But I just don't know if the difference between eight forms of hyaluronic acid and 10, but an SPF of 30 versus an SPF of 50, I don't know if this is going to be appealing to people. Again, I'll go ahead and show you the application of this. Unfortunately, again, I can't give a long-term review. Uh, it's fine. It does look less dewy than the hyaluronic acid watery sun gel. I guess I'll go ahead and say that Eason Tree was saying on their Instagram that, you know, it's just simply another option. It's meant to be there as, you know, maybe somebody is thinking, oh, I'm not going to see much sun today and SPF 30 is a good choice. And I guess I can see that perspective. At the same time, for me at least, I would have preferred to see different filters in this second option. Again, unless this is a, a, a trial release to see if people like these enough to introduce them to the US market. That's my best guess. I am so sorry that I can't do better reviews of most of these. I can again say I, I do like the mineral option, but I, I just can't give better reviews of the other two. As always, if any of you can, please feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I know this just released today, so people most likely cannot do that right now, but I'll be looking out for other reviews to see how this went for other people. I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> but that's it for today's video. Thank you again to Stylevana for sending these over. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will see you all next time.